We already saw briefly how to select lines with the Set Stream Editor. As you may remember, this is a non-interactive editor which serially processes files based on the commands you specify. Let's see how we can perform more complex processing with SED. As a warm-up, we can start with a simple SED script that will spell out various digits. Here is the SED script named spell.sed. It starts with hash bang user bin sed minus f. This line specifies that the contents of the file will not be interpreted by the shell, as would normally happen with hash bang bin sh. Instead, they will be interpreted by a program named sed. Thus, when executing this script, sed rather than the shell runs with the file as an argument. The following lines of the script contain substitution commands. Each command starts with the letter S for substitute. After S comes the pattern we want to substitute, specified in a regular expression. Then we specify the substitution. The flag at the end of the command specifies the type of substitution we want to perform. Here G means global substitution, that is substitute all occurrences rather than only the first match. So this script substitutes all digits with their corresponding word. For example, digit 0 is substituted with the word 0, digit 1 with the word 1, and so on. To see this in action, let's first raise number 2 to the 40th power. We can easily get this result with the basic calculator BC. Now, to get the same result spelled out, I run the same command and then type the output to dot slash spell dot said. The same result is displayed, but the digit now are spelled out. 1, 2, 9, 9, 5, and so on. Let's see a more complex set script that will convert lists of strings into a JSON array. I use such a script leg regularly in order to automate the host configuration using the Randec process automation system. Let's write our set script line by line, explaining each step in detail. I store it in a here document named to json.sed. The first command I enter is the i command, which stands for insert. In front of the letter i, we put the number 1 to specify that this command is executed on the first line. What we want to insert is specified after the i command with a backslash. Here, I insert an open square bracket. This is used in JSON to denote an array beginning. Next. I want to convert all lines into strings. To do that, I run substitute specifying with dot star to match anything and replace it with what was matched in double quotes followed by a comma. What was matched is specified instead with an ampersand. Finally, I append with the A command a close square bracket to denote the array's ending. Similarly with the insert command, we put a dollar sign in front of A to specify that this command is executed on the last line. With EOF, we specify the end of the here document. I convert this script into an executable program with the chmod command we've seen before. Now, I can list the directory's contents and convert them into a JSON array running this script. In this case, I run it on the user directory. We get a comma-separated list with the names in double quotes and enclosed in square brackets. SED supports a branching command which has a script's execution jump from one command to another. Let's see it in action. Consider the case of a SED script that removes a file's hyphenation. Think as an example this text file here which has lots of hyphens. Let's write our SED script. I write it as a here document and save it as unhyphen.sed. First, I specify a label which I'll use to join the subsequent hyphenated lines. Said labels are specified with a colon followed by the label name. Here, I name it redo. Next, I specify a compound command within a set of open and closed curly brackets. Before this command, there is a regular expression pattern enclosed in two slashes. This pattern specifies that the composite command will be executed on all lines ending, notice the dollar sign, 
with a phi hyphen. Notice the dash. Within the compound command, I first use the capital N command to append the next line to the current one. Then, I substitute any hyphen followed by a new line with nothing. In this way, after merging two lines, the current and the next one, I remove any hyphen from the end of the merged result. Finally, I branch to the redo label with the B command in order to repeat the same process for the next pair of hyphenated lines. I end my here document and set my script to be an executable program. Now, I can execute it specifying the above text file as the input file. We see that all hyphens have been removed, but the lines are not uniformly formatted. This can be easily resolved by piping the output of the script to the FMT command. In the past, we've used the FMT command with the minus S option to split long lines. FMT also reformats the output lines to match the screen width as we see here. This concludes the first part of our unit on processing data with SED. Stay with us.